What's going on guys and welcome back to Top 10 Nerd. The nerdiest page you have ever seen hands down. Oh of course, no questions asked. And with so many comic book storylines and new amazing characters coming in, it is tough to keep track sometimes. For sure man, that's why for today's list we're bringing you 10 of our favorite new Marvel superheroes. So in no particular order, I'm Taylor McWatters. And I'm Patty D. And here are Top 10 newest Marvel comic heroes. Kicking off the list at number 10, we have Fuse, aka Johnny Watts. Making his debut in Hawkeye Volume 5, Issue 2 in 2017, we find Johnny crossing paths with Kate. We find Kate taking out some frat boys and she actually almost shoots Johnny. But he insists that he hangs around to make sure that she's okay. He's not a bad guy, he's not a threat. He's actually quite amazing. Everyone be like Johnny. It's not hard. Watch out for people. And then he returns in the next issue after finding Kate, but this time we see him insist that he goes along for the ride. Interesting. He got close to Kate during investigations and eventually Kate ends up having feelings for Johnny. In an amazing reveal, we find out Johnny's true purpose. So during a battle with Hawkeye and Madame Mask's crew, Johnny saves Kate's life by shielding her from falling concrete. Super strength? Super speed? No, no, no. See, Johnny can omnimorph duplicates. So basically, he can essentially become any substance that he makes contact with. Hence the fitting alter ego super name, Fuse. Johnny Watts is awesome. He's laid back, realistic, charming, of course. I'm kind of hoping we get a version of him in the Disney Plus Hawkeye series. He could be a nice mid-season surprise. I don't know. I'm here for it. And before we continue with our list, guys, if you haven't already, please make sure you go ahead and toss us a thumbs up on our video. It's this one, not this one. Unless you're Spider-Man, then it's that one. But still, you know, it goes a long way here at our secret base. You guys rock. Thank you so much, nerds. Back to some heroes. Let's go. Coming in at number nine, we have Ironheart. Ironheart's big debut was Invincible Iron Man Volume 3 in 2016. Riri Williams built her own Iron Man suit and is a gifted young scientist enrolled at MIT. At age 15, a genius inventor even at the age of 10, she reverse engineers the tech from Iron Man armor model number 41 and gets all inspired, going on to create her own prototype suit from stolen materials found on campus. When her actions raise the suspicion of campus security, she just throws on her suit and flies away. She winds up stopping some escaped prisoners and catching Tony Stark's attention, and he totally endorses her dream of becoming a superhero. During Civil War II, Tony Stark was knocked out by Captain Marvel, and Riri steps up to continue his legacy. She's been busy since her debut, joining up with the champions to fight Hydra, and eventually being offered her own lab at MIT. Some fun facts about Ironheart. The name Iron Woman was apparently too old fashioned and Iron Maiden, as you can imagine, was already taken. And she's a big fan of Tribe Called Quest. And coming in at number 8, Snowguard. Making her first appearance in Champions Volume 2, she's a teenager from Canada. Yeah, from a village on Baffin Island in Nunavut. So Amka encountered the Inuit spirit Sila in containment while she was investigating the master of the world's faculty. So in Northern Lights Part 1, it really pulls you in right off the bat. It feels a lot like Star Wars in a way. Like when Rey was climbing around Starkiller base, Amka tries to free Sila, but of course, she was attacked by the base's drones. So she ended up pushing them into a containment field, which caused an explosion that freed Sila. The explosion didn't end up injuring Amka. Her brave actions were a great call. The spirit actually healed her instantly. So Amka was trapped in the faculty, but she was now one with Sila's powers. Those powers being divine empowerment. So because of her actions saving Sila, she can now harness the spiritual energies of the Aurora Borealis and the Arctic. That's not too shabby, and that's also not all. She can also transform herself into animals, like more than one animal as well. She can make herself turn into like a group of animals. Private petting zoo for the win. And of course she can fly, cause you know, why not? Number seven, Mosaic. First appearing in Uncanny Inhumans number 11, Morris Sackett played pro basketball for the New York Stride, a five time championship winner. He has latent inhuman heritage in his DNA, which becomes activated by a Terrigen bomb, transforming him into an inhuman through Terrigenesis. Seriously, he doesn't even have a physical body now. Mosaic now exists as an unknown form of energy floating around with the incredible ability to possess people and gain access to all of their memories, skills, and abilities. He can also phase through solid objects, levitate, and become invisible. 
he's actually picked up a whole lot of other abilities since he burst onto the scene because he keeps the abilities he learns when he possesses someone. He's got this interesting duality about him as a character in that he's got all of these cool abilities, but now it's like he doesn't even exist. I really love how Marvel is playing around with the concept of identity with this character because that's something that we're all thinking about. Who are you? Furthermore, who are you if you have no physical body? And number six, Clayton Cortez. Also known as Weapon H, Clayton made his debut in Totally Awesome Hulk issue 22. And he's exactly what you would guess. He's like Wolverine, but with far more discipline and control. Clayton was a Marine and former Eagle Star contractor, and he was actually hired a part-time to take out the villagers of Yujanka for sabotaging a Roxxon pipeline. So Clayton had a change of heart and then went ahead and killed his own men, which then led to his capture and sale to Dr. Alba. Dr. Alba is great at her job. I mean, that job, of course, being the creation of Wolverine Hulk monster hybrids. It didn't take long for the Hulk and other mutants to storm in and investigate Weapon X and, of course, raid their central command. So Weapon H ended up retaining memories. So when he was sent out to fight H Beta, there's like heads getting cut off. It's a really wild time, but Weapon H remembers getting tortured. So he wants revenge on the Weapon X staff. Nice. Luckily, the Hulk holds him back while they get away, or it would have been Pretty, pretty messy, to say the least. Number five, Singularity. Singularity first appeared in A-Force number one in 2015, the all-female team of Avengers. Her origin is still a mystery for the most part. She first appears as a meteorite flying across the sky, crashing down near Arcadia on Battleworld. Nico Minoru, he comes along and he brings her to the rest of the A-Force where she inexplicably opens a portal, like, like she's kind of like half conscious when this happens, and the portal opens and a giant hostile sentinel pops out. Later, in an epic display of power, Singularity absorbs an entire army of undead, swooping up into the sky and exploding in a flash of light to save her new friends. She next appears in the Marvel Prime Universe in Avengers Volume 6. When she appears, the villain known as Antimatter is also created and immediately attacks Singularity, but he is defeated soon after. Singularity is believed to be something like the physical embodiment of a black hole. She's capable of flight, teleportation, and even time traveling. Maybe she can go back and fix some of these crazy convoluted timelines. And coming in at number four, Sleeper. Making its first appearance back in 2018, Sleeper is the seventh spawn of Venom. We could find Sleeper's first appearance in Venom issue 18. See, Sleeper is the outcome of a difficult and pretty awful pregnancy. You don't say. There's the link. So Sleeper takes on the host of Tel Kar, a Kree soldier who is very much not alive at this point. Sleeper is terrifying, but just wait until he combines with the other symbiotes and becomes hybrid. Oh my god. In First Host, Issue 5, Sleeper saved Eddie Brock by merging with Tel Kar. Saying to Eddie, I lobotomized him. He made my parents his mindless servant. Turnabout seemed like fair play. This body is strong. There are depths of knowledge and memories in this mind. Worlds, galaxies. I've been kept in a cage my whole life, and there's so much to see out there, and I will see it. I know you did your best, Father, but I just don't need a cage anymore. And if that's not a badass line, I can tell you what is, really. Readers point out that the length of Telkar's hair actually gives us an idea that this forced symbiosis worked, at least for a bit. One of the best moments with Sleeper has to be at issue 19 when he bonds to Dylan, or at least try to. Number three, Moon Girl. So in 1978, Marvel Comics released the first issue of Devil Dinosaur, accompanied by his partner, Moon Boy, the first human, like the first human ever. This is a prehistoric old school story from Marvel and it's recently been revamped. In 2015, Marvel released Moon Girl and Devil Dinosaur number one, where we meet the next generation, Lunella Lafayette. A super genius child inventor, she becomes obsessed with the Kree and builds a device to study Kree technology, and she has a real talent for inventing gadgets. When one of her teachers accidentally activates a device she invented, it inadvertently opens a portal to another world and the killer folk from Devil Dinosaur's universe come through to the present day New York with the Devil Beast himself in tow. Luna's studies led her to learning that she was susceptible to the Terrigen mist surrounding the Earth, similar to Mosaic, and she is terrified of Terrigenesis transforming her. She gets kidnapped by the killer folk and Devil Beast comes along and helps her out. 
She later rescues Devil Beast when he gets captured and kept at the Bronx Zoo, and it's the beginning of a beautiful friendship. She later even earns the ability to swap consciousnesses with the Devil Dinosaur. Of course, with the consciousness of a dinosaur inside of her body, she kind of comes off as a crazy feral beast. One of the coolest things about Moon Girl is that despite her age, she is one of the most genius characters in the Marvel Universe, with a genius intellect rivaling even Bruce Banner. And number two, Gib. Making his first appearance in Runaways Volume 5, Issue 13, Gib was the last of the Gibrim left on Earth, and he's of course a member of the Runaways now. The seed of the Gibrim discovered the Runaways and were going to demand that they honor their parents' promise, which was to inherit the Earth, empowered by the billions of sacrificed souls. Awesome! Well, thankfully the Runaways prevented all that from happening and trapped the Gibrim in limbo. See, Gib was tasked to stay with the Runaways and guard them for about a week, so during this time with the Runaways, Gib is like, eh, these guys are pretty cool, maybe I'll stick around, I don't know. And he saw their kindness and compassion, and then when Rim and Bo returned, Gib tried to convince them to forgo the right of thunder. See, Gib has our backs, that's our man right there. All the while, Gert was prepping to send them into the future, like 999 years into the future. Did Black Widow finally come out? Let us know, we're still waiting back here in 2020, we're, you know, we're still waiting. The Runaways welcome Gib with open arms and they even help him find an alternate meal plan, you know, rather than feasting on sacrificed souls. His appearance is pretty epic alone. I mean, his powers, of course, enhance strength, but also shape-shifting. Yeah, Gib matches the appearance of the people surrounding him, and apparently his true form would cause eyes to bleed. So if you're playing Marco Polo with Gib, don't want to cheat, trust me, you do not want to cheat. Coming in at number one, we have Emily Bright. Emily just burst onto the scene this year in Marvel's Strange Academy number one. She was actually born with her magical abilities, totally freaking out her parents. She sometimes levitate her toys around and even levitate her dog once. One day, her dog is hit by a car and she winds up healing the animal with her magical abilities. This leads to her contacting Doctor Strange and asking for his help, and she becomes enrolled in his newly created Strange Academy. She receives some high praise from Scarlet Witch on her first day, and by lunchtime, she's used more magic in one day than she's ever used before in her life. I'm loving this new series. It seems to take inspiration from Umbrella Academy and Professor X's School for Gifted Youngsters, and it's really cool just seeing some characters kind of finding themselves and figuring out how exactly they want to use their powers. Well, that's all the time we have for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching and let us know which Marvel hero did we miss? Yeah, let us know in the comments so we can catch up this weekend. I'm Patty D. And I'm Tay Tay McWatts. And we'll catch you guys next time. Stay safe. Peace.